Hi guys and welcome back to my yearly study tips and tricks video. If you haven't seen the past videos where I speak about productivity apps, I speak about superfoods to eat to help you revise, I speak about how I do my mind maps and stuff, then I will leave them in the description box below because I won't go over the same tips. But since I've started university, I've learned so many different life hacks on how to revise for my friends here. So I thought I'd share them with you. One of my friends, Janica, she actually locked her phone in a locker at school and leaves it there like she left it over the break um I couldn't do that something I'm more inclined to do is to give my phone to a friend and maybe I take theirs and we basically just get rid of the distraction of going on your phone it is quite a drastic measure but I know it works and when times get that bad and you really need to stop procrastinating that's definitely something that you could maybe try out Janica is also the one who told me about the app Echo360. It's basically an app that lets you download your lecture captures so you can watch them on the go. So if you've got some spare time while you're waiting at a bus stop or if you're on a train and if you've run out of podcasts to listen to then it might be quite a good idea to play one of your lectures. So if you have lecture capture then it's worth downloading Echo360. It just asked me to log on with my King's email and then they were all loaded so that was pretty cool. My other friend Maisie introduced me to this. It might look like a really long roll of cling film. It's not. It's actually a magic whiteboard. This is actually the reason I wanted to film this video. I'm so excited to use this. I've already covered my room in this whiteboard stuff. Basically it doesn't use glue, it just uses static to stick to the walls. Also something I did is I cut them in half because they're quite big so that it could fit on more surfaces. It's good for the environment because you're not using as much paper and if you make a mistake you can just rub it out rather than starting all over again. Plus you can reuse them so once I'm done with my summer exams I can just rub out the stuff, roll it back up and then use it again next year because it's just a whiteboard, it's reusable. I'm hoping in the long run that this will actually save me money. It was slightly expensive, it was £26 on Amazon but you get 25 sheets in this so that's over a pound a piece and they're huge so you're getting good value for your money um, but I did find out after I purchased that that there are cheaper ones on Amazon so I know in America you can get this kind of stuff for eight nine dollars. I think because I got the one that's just come off Dragon's Den it was a bit more expensive but it's okay I used Amazon Smile, so I was giving to a charity, so I didn't want to refund it and then buy a different one. I know you can also pick up a magic chalkboard, but I think with chalk it will be more messy than with whiteboard pens because you'll get the like the dust everywhere, so that's why I'm, I'm sticking with the whiteboard. One of the best places to stick your whiteboard is by your sink, so when you're cleaning your teeth or brushing your hair you can look at it. Um, I've also got it by my bed so I can just stare at it before I go to sleep. I've got it by my mirror so that when I'm checking my outfit I can also check my stats at the same time. But to go with all my whiteboards, I did have to pick up some whiteboard wire eraser markers and I got these from Arteza. Of course you can just buy cheap whiteboard pens in Poundland or the Pound Shop, but I thought I'd invest in some good ones. They weren't expensive either. The great thing about Arteza is that it's a premium brand, but they always have sales on. Um, so from there I also got these to help me make my notes. I have the 20 retractable gel pens and the 14 metallic gel pens. I recently swapped from my Staedtler fine tip pens to gel pens just because I keep on having issues where I spill water on my notes and what I've noticed is that gel pens don't run when water is leaked on them and they're really good quality, they're so smooth. Metallic ones are not only good for note taking but they're also good for artwork. However, another alternative to the whiteboard is to cover your room in post-it notes. So it's kind of like the Casper Joe room prank but it's actually for revision. This might work out cheaper in the short run and it is already more colourful. You don't have to work too hard with colourful pens. Another tip is to make a list of all the things that you need to do. So I do this on the Notes app because it's free. Also there are so many good tools you can use. So for example they have the little cross check things so you can just touch it and it takes it off your list. You can add in uh, tables and charts. So I would use this to have all of the lecture titles and then what uh, pages of extra reading that I need to do for those lectures so that it's really organised and you can see it like which one relates to which one. You can also scan in photos so I scanned in photos from my notes onto the pages. You could even type your notes up on the notes app. It's just so good. You can write as well if you want to write some equations because 
equations are quite hard to type. So for all my four modules, I've basically broken them up into around seven, eight tasks that I need to do. For all subjects, I will highlight my notes and I will do past papers. However, for subjects that are more case study and theory heavy, I will record myself saying those case studies and then listen to it back at night time. However, for subjects that are more number based and it wouldn't really make sense if you're telling yourself five times two, you know, for those, that's when I would do the textbook practice papers. So in the textbook, you often get questions at the end of each chapter. That's the kind of thing that I will focus on for those topics. Also for topics like science and economics, do not underestimate the power of YouTube. Maths is also really good for this. Um, if you don't understand something, you can just listen to videos and different people will explain things in different ways. It's really good. I've spoken about those in previous videos, but I will again link some channels down below. Another important thing is to plan your revision. Now I've spoken about revision timetables in the past. I'm not a huge fan of them. I know a lot of my friends are, um, but personally they don't work for me because I spend longer making them than I do actually sticking to them. The thing I've done for my exams this time is to use Google Calendar. So I've dedicated a whole week to each topic in a row. So I'm not just gonna do one day of stats and then one day of econ, I'm gonna do a whole week of stats because it has actually been found to be more efficient to do the three rule. The three hour rule is basically how you make something stick in your long-term memory. So you have to repeat it after three hours, then you repeat it after three days, and then you repeat it after three weeks. Because I did my revision notes as I went along with the lectures, it means that my first day of revision I've allocated, I will just be reading those notes and making sure that there's no grammar mistakes or anything like that. Then the second day I will go through and I will read the textbook and I'll add anything into those notes, but because I've read them the day before, I know whereabouts everything is and it's a lot easier and more efficient. Um, and it's also repeating it again. Then on the third day, I will highlight the keywords, so the case study names or any facts. And because I've now read all the stuff for two days straight, by the third day, I don't need to highlight any of the description stuff. So it is just the key facts. So then on the fourth day, um, I will do past papers and any questions um, and see how I do. Then the fifth day, I will then go over the areas that I performed badly on in the papers and see what I need to remember better. From that, I might make a mind map um, and rather than using words, use pictures because if you're not remembering the words, then the pictures often will stick in your brain more. Or even better, if the papers have come back saying that you are pretty strong on all areas, then use the whiteboard to just write as much as you can remember as fast as possible and then you can just rub it out and then do it again for the second topic and then rub it out and then write as much as you can remember for the third topic. Time pressure in the exams is probably the killer um, so it's good that you're practicing writing out as fast as you can just to get the stress levels and adrenaline going and see how well you can perform. Sixth and seventh day is just going over all your notes, highlighted stuff, mind maps all over again just so that you can keep the picture of your notes in your head um, so that you can go back to them when you're in the exam. It's just making sure that you memorize all the parts and where they are, just going over and over again. So that's how I do the three hour, three day thing. And then for the three week thing, it would be set out in my Google calendars like, Week one is just for stats, week two would be for economics, and then week three I would only need to spend a few days on stats again and then a few days on economics again. The last thing that I do to really help my concentration is to play with my stress ball. Um, it's quite a small one but it's a nice, it's quite firm, so it means I can chuck it at the wall while I'm looking at my mind maps um, and I can also squeeze it while I'm writing because apparently, according to research, doing two things at once just like fidgeting with something while you're writing means that you're focusing more um so if you haven't tried it then maybe pick up a, a stress ball i might sprint down the corridor i used to do that when i was at home just in between breaks maybe um like remembering all the things possible as i'd sprint just to basically get all the oxygen to my brain when i was at college i would read my notes as i walked to school but now i'm in london i don't think that's very safe if i did that i think i'd be hit by a car the only way that i can get the kind of movement action in when i'm studying is either going to the gym or just pacing around my room and reciting facts just so that 
you get the blood flowing because sitting down at your desk for a long time is not necessarily the best thing for your productivity. I understand that was a lot of information I just kind of blurted at you so feel free to give this video a like um, or save it to one of your playlists so that you can come back to it later. If you have any more study related questions or if you need any help with any revision things then comment them down below and I will reply to you all and help you um, if you need me. Subscribe to this channel for weekly videos and I will see you next Thursday. Have a lovely day and good luck with all your exams. Bye!